Hello and welcome to Indie Incursion, an indie games podcast, your weekly source for all your indie game news you might want to know and love. This week, we, we're we bringing you uh, a, this weird-ass Pokemon Snap game called Paparazzi. <laughs> I don't really know what's up with that. It's about dogs instead of the one that we talked about a while ago about birds. Uh, We got the Play Date, which is a really weird kind of eclectic little console that's going to have a crank on it. Everybody's excited about it. Everybody. Nobody's annoyed about the high price. Um, We're going to be talking about some fucked up shit happening with Bloodstained, which, I mean, it might not be, depending on what you think, but I'm going to have some opinions. Oh, here we go. Like natural. And then we're going to talk about the Holy Grail of video games, Psychonauts 2. Ooh, baby. I'm so excited, Big Josh Boy. I'm so excited. Oh, it's going to be great. Uh, but before we get into any of that, I have to introduce myself. I am Von Hyde and, of course, my illustrious co-host, The Big Josh Boy. I like, how you doing I like how you kept the, the illustrious. We're still, uh, uh, still yeah. adding to that name. So, what I did was I did actually wrote down, down <laughs> an intro because I always forget what I'm going to say. Ah, so wow. instead, I wrote it down and I put illustrious. How if I'm being honest, probably not used in the proper context. Nah. But you're illustrious now. That's okay. I'll take it. It's got to mean something, right? Mm. Something good. Something cool. I imagine a guy that wears a lot of capes. Mm. Uh, like does, uh, just like has boats loads of money. Um, <laughs> boats? Several not boats. Even, yeah, not even one boat. Boats. Multiple yeah. boats. So really, you're coming out of this just smelling like a rose. I mean, I that's, mean. it's... It's a fantastic name. Let's be real. It's always great how at the start of the podcast you always build me up so you could tear me down later throughout. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> That's my plan. It's my plan in life actually is to just build people up slowly and then tear them down. Uh, the same thing is like setting low expectations for everyone. Uh, your poor fiance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen the movie? Uh, it's called What If. Mm, no, I can't say I have. Oh, your garbage person is a fantastic movie. Oh, see, I there's this, number like... one of knocking me down. <laughs> so I love like romantic movies, like romance movies. Mm-hmm. This one has Daniel Radcliffe in it. It's oh, a fantastic okay. movie. And at the end, he's talking to his wife about uh, like having sex. He's like, yeah, I've been purposely like being bad at sex so that it'll just constantly get better. And then the last time they have sex is the last time... It, it, like the best time is the last time because it'll be so good they die. Mm, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, so I set low expectations. Turns out I'm just the best at everything. Um, and I'm just making everybody believe that I'm terrible. And then I'm going to slowly get better and better. And just When I'm 90 years old, I'll be like a Goliath among men. Yeah, I mean, you've been saying you're shit at games for uh, the start of this podcast. Eventually, while you know, we're at like uh, episode 100, you're going to be like a pro at something. Episode 100? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It'll take a while, but you'll get there. Add something. It turns out the thing I'm really good at is Stardew Valley. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, Fuck you were one of the people who was uh, on the, the streaming competition for the Twitch Rivals. I should have been. And instead, those pickaxe animations, just they got to me, dude. They just threw me off. I couldn't do what it. What can you do? Yeah. Yeah. What have you been playing this week, Big Josh? Uh, so I'm playing a little bit of... Um, Deltarune, actually. So I've had this on my Switch <gasps> for quite a while. I know, gasp. Um, <laughs> I've had this on my Switch for quite a while, and it just kind of sat there. Um, because originally we talked about this, and I had downloaded it, and I was like, I got to play it. And then I realized I couldn't even play it, because they were just like, you can download it, and it'll be free eventually. And I was like, oh, well, that sucks. So I kind of just forgot about it. And then the other day, I was looking at my Switch, because it's so useful for me and my wife to just sit down on the couch, and I'll play a game while she's watching tv and i could still actually interact with her so i started playing that game and it was about since it's only you know chapter one is the free content of it and he's uh apparently working on other chapters they don't know how long it'll take or when it'll come out but toby fox is working on the additional chapters and those will be price locked i'm assuming but chapter one is all free and it's about roughly i think i played two to three hours of content worth um which is still pretty good for a free you know you just get to download it and try it out um if you're a fan of undertale it's going to be pretty much more of the same um one of the things with undertale that i was kind of like meh at is and it's the same thing with this story the dialogue and i'm sure i'll get a lot of flack for this um it can be borderline uh, edging around humorous to very very cringy 
And so <laughs> it's like sometimes it's very hit or miss. And sometimes when I'm reading the dialogue, I'm like, ugh, this is terrible. It's just like it's way too either obvious or it's just like I don't think this was even necessary. But there's other parts where I'm like, okay, this is good. And the story for the the end of chapter one was it left uh, a pretty big cliffhanger where you're like, well, whoa, whoa, what the hell does that mean? And a lot of it isn't really explained very well, um, just in uh, an obvious nature because it's going to want you to, you know, get attached and try to figure out well, what's going on. And there's a whole bunch of speculation and whatever on the internet. But for the most part, the game is pretty solid as far as a chapter kind of demo of what it could be goes. Uh, the gameplay is very similar to Undertale, just like I said before. Um, they're basically giving you the option to always kill enemies, but that's not the main objective they want you to take. They want you to always go the other route, which is basically playing this little uh, defend, or not defend, but dodge uh, random attacks with this little heart that you play as when an enemy attacks you and instead try to do something that's usually nice or some kind of weird way to pacify the enemy so that you don't actually kill them. Um, with this one, I thought it was actually really cool. Some of the fights, they did incorporate a lot of unique elements for the dodging effect where uh, some of the enemies are now what's known as support enemies um and i didn't get very far into undertale to be honest so they might have incorporated that in the others but they had a lot of unique features right from the get-go in this chapter one so for me it was more uh, appealing just because in undertale it kind of fell flat for me just because i lost interest uh, about halfway through because it just seemed kind of slow in the pacing of it for this one i felt a little bit of that but it it, it did keep its own um i'm not sure how i would feel if this was a constant you know chapter by chapter sort of thing but it would be at least beneficial for me as the player for this style game if it was released in separate chapters just because it would be something to pick up every so often and not get burnt out by the constant uh monotonous feel that i got from undertale anyway but i had a lot of fun with it for the time that i did i still haven't played undertale <laughs> i feel like like a bogus indie game fan since i still haven't played Undertale. i mean i never finished it i got you know like halfway through with it but i just i couldn't i mean there's a lot of people who really enjoy it but it's just i don't and, and what's weird is it seems like it's really my kind of game like it seems like very stylistic to the type of games that i play just because it has such a unique element of the the dodge mechanic when fighting but it just it, this the story didn't really encapture me as many of the fans uh hype it up to be yeah dude after this episode i would not be surprised if both of us were assassinated <laughs> people really love undertale i know and i'm not saying it's bad it's just it wasn't for me but I mean, I, I definitely think I heard you say it was bad. <laughs> sure. Um, but no, but Delta Rune, it, it has a much different, a much different, but yet the same feel to it. Um, if that makes any sense, which for you, I guess it doesn't since you have nothing to go off of, but <laughs> yeah, I, like, All right. <laughs> I guess that checks out, but it, it was very different just in the sense of like you, you have these three characters where you're you're basically fighting as a team, um, but one of the characters for most of it is not listening to you and is constantly attacking, and you have to always start your combos by warning the enemies that they're attacking so that they dodge his attacks if you don't want them to get killed. And it, I, I don't know, it's very it's very interesting the way they put all of this together in the different personalities of each character that you have. I'm actually really excited. Eventually, I will play Undertale, and eventually, I will actually play delta room but it's probably not gonna happen for like 10 years <laughs> well I i've mean, got such a large backlog that i don't think it'll happen that's okay <laughs> because honestly like uh you know toby fox even said he has no idea when this will even come out so this might be something that in 10 years won't even be ready until then there you go dude yeah we actually reported on that when he initially said mm -hmm. it see true journalism <laughs> at its finest so you know what i've been playing this week dauntless uh yeah i played some dauntless guess without who you because you wouldn't get on because you're a big bitch boy is what you are oh man number two <laughs> getting knocked down <laughs> yeah i was like hey did everybody want to play dauntless e-face gets on plays dauntless with me dude that guy's chill but no big josh no boy. big josh boy uh i have to be illustrious you know what i'm saying 
Yeah, you you just got to keep the hype up eventually. Like, this is the same thing. Eventually, when we play a game together, it's going to be the best experience of all time. Mm -hmm. And then we're both just going to die. Our hands are going to break off. We're both going to die. Wow. Uh, enticing. <laughs> like, that got real ominous. Yeah, all I don't right. know about this. <laughs> I have also been playing, and then this this is fine to say because it won't be by the time this posts, yeah, by the time this posts, I will be past the embargo. I have been playing Gato Roboto. I'm so jealous. Um, it's it's super fun. So it's it's incredibly cute. I love its 2D like side scrolling pixel art. It's so awesome. Kiki the cat is probably the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I love it. Um, the only negative things I honestly have to say about this game is that sometimes you're forced to basically like exchange your exosuit for a submarine or a turret mm -hmm. um which the turrets aren't bad because it's 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 a stationary turret and it's meant more uh, of it's meant as more of a puzzle mechanic than it is an actual um than it is an actual vehicle but the submarine you basically trade out like this awesome suit that you have like upgrades on and basically like it, the suit makes it a Metroidvania game, and then you trade it out for this submarine that has none of that. <laughs> and it's like, cool. And another thing that I have an issue with is that normally during levels, it slowly ramps up in difficulty to, like, the boss's difficulty, or um, you collect certain items or you collect certain abilities that basically make bosses, like, they don't make them easier, but they make them consistent mm -hmm. with the level. Right. Because you, like, gain an ability, and then you use it throughout the level, and then you use it in the boss fight, and it makes sense. But in Gato Roboto, the bosses are oddly disproportionate to the rest of the level, like, to a weird degree. So you'd get through, like, I, I found myself literally on every boss with the exception of one because it was more of a puzzle than it was a fight. Um, and that's one that includes stationary turrets. Um, every boss I went up to was far more difficult than the rest of the level mm. and it became excessively infuriating because every time i die you have to listen you have to like uh it reprompts all the conversation again uh, you have to i mean tech yeah you can't just skip past it by like button mashing a or or like enter or something if you play with the mouse and keyboard but it's still super annoying hmm. yeah but I did end up giving it a pretty high score for Handsome Phantom. I found it really fun. I think everybody should play it, especially since it's only eight bucks. It's like you could find that just in a couch cushion. I have a futon, so I literally couldn't. But like, it's it's not an excessive amount of money. It's fairly inexpensive, and it's really really fun. Yeah, that's awesome. So wait, l let's take a step back because I wanted to ask a question. So you said you had to drop the exosuit for the submarine. So yeah. is it? Like, you can only find your exosuit at certain locations, or, like, what does it mean to drop it? So, every time you uh, save points, give you a new exosuit, basically. Mm. The, and they'll also, be, like, regain your health and such. Um, there's only one section of the game where save points don't actually give you, like, an exosuit, and it's because you're, like, in tunnels that you can only, like, you have to be small enough, so you have to play as just Kiki the cat. Mm. But otherwise, um, yeah, you, you have to, in this specific level, and in where the submarine is included, you can't use your exosuit because it's damaged by water so you have to trade it out for the submarine which it doesn't like build around you or anything you just have to find it which they're conveniently located at the beginning of each one of these levels <laughs> how nice yeah you're just wow nice a conveniently located uh conveniently placed submarine for me to use that's interesting well that's really weird but i'm still super hyped for it and you should be. I, it's fucking great. Yeah, and I love a good boss challenge, so I think it'll be uh, definitely up my alley. I'll have to see if you agree with me. It yeah. like it ramps up significantly. Hmm. I was like, dude, nothing in this fucking level is as hard as this stupid ass mouse. <laughs> it's awesome. Interesting. It's and it has a lot of like interesting humor. the The story is like. It's it's a little weak with the exception of if you want to go around and basically like 100% the game, you can get an additional little bits of story mm. um, through basically like audio diaries. But I mean, of course, you have to read them because there's no actual voice acting in this game with the exception of like. Oh, wow. Okay. But 
Is that is that what yeah. Kiki sounds like? Uh, everybody who speaks sounds like that. Kiki actually sounds like a cat. She just says meow. Oh, okay, good. Like, I was like, yeah, uh, yeah I was confused. Like I was like, why? <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's weird. It's it's like hearing the the parents talk in Rugrats. Like it's it's odd. Rugrats. You've never watched Rugrats before. The parents talk. The parents talk normal. Are you talking about Charlie Brown? I mean, no. It's it's the babies hearing the. Oh, parents the, talk oh, okay. Talk. Yeah, uh, they just yeah. hear him like bop 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 bop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of a thing. I you gotcha, know what I mean? I gotcha, yeah, I gotcha. it's it's like that. I gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm super hyped. You should be, dude. You should be. Um, but something that people are super hyped about, I some might say even freaking out about, <laughs> is our first news story. It is over on uh, that good old IGN. This is written by Joseph Noop, and it is everyone is freaking out over paparazzi, which is like Pokemon Snap with dogs. So if you guys remember, we actually talked about a similar like game. Um it, it was also similar in style to this, which is kind of weird, of a uh, Pokemon Snap-ass game where you, like, take pictures of birds. This one is instead dogs. Much better. Uh, paparazzi. Yeah, yeah, it's much better. They got freaking skateboards, dude. <laughs> it's like uh, that bird border game or whatever, that bird Skate- skateboard skateboard? game. Skateboard? Yeah, skateboard. That's what it was. <laughs> Uh, Paparazzi is being developed by Sunday Month, an independent developer that bounces between work for hire projects and their own games. Uh, perhaps most notably, Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor, which I have never heard <laughs> I've of. I've never heard of that, but that sounds awesome. Yeah, I've also <laughs> never heard of Sunday Month, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, Sunday Month tweeted out a short video of gameplay for, pa- from Paparazzi, which has players roam around an environment, a beach in this clip, although it's unconfirmed if additional levels will be available i'd assume they would be um and taking pictures of dogs laying on the beach hopping around like a jackrabbit uh leaning precariously (laughs) over the awning of an italian restaurant or manning the video yeah a video what that's window i can't believe it just (laughs) um or manning the window at a food truck uh there are also dog celebrities and if you want a picture of them you'll have to get crafty uh paparazzi steam page says the local multiplayer dog sporting dog spotting competitions will be a feature in the game uh paparazzi is currently scheduled for a 2019 release date um and it it, it doesn't yeah it's just that it's 2019 yeah. nothing who knows? no date who knows are you so stoked for this were you just the biggest pokemon snap fan ever and then you saw this and you're like ah and you died i mean i wouldn't go that far i mean you're here so you're not dead I'm, but yeah you know what I I, mean. uh, someone someone resuscitated me um oh that's good yeah no i'm glad you had somebody on hand for that yeah yeah, yeah. i always do anytime i see an article it says pokemon snap just in case you know you gotta never be too prepared uh that's just being pragmatic yeah that's that's the kind of guy i am the kind of big boy i am uh so <laughs> i wouldn't say at all um i was i was a big pokemon snap fan uh but this game isn't pokemon snap obviously like people are going to compare it just because it has a camera but it definitely seems a lot different by the way that you're just you have like a free roam and you're running around and just trying to find the dogs which is fine um but yeah wasn't pokemon snap on rails yeah it was on rails so it was all set in one specific area i mean the really the only big thing about this in comparison to pokemon snap is that you're taking pictures um which is fine it's still super cute and i still would want to play this because i love dogs and I think the idea of trying to get pictures of celebrity dogs is just so silly that it's bound to be a good time, especially with the like the weird event things they're trying to do. It just sounds very crazy, but in a good way. Um, and plus, I just love the animations. This is this game is still obviously in development, so I think some things might even out a bit or f- get flushed out. But some of the like the like the dogs, how they just kind of like hop and don't really move their legs, I think is hilarious. I hope they keep some of that, at least with maybe like one specific like type of dog, like a hopping dog. I don't, I don't know, but it's just the way the movement works in this game and the way the the little dogs look, how they just have their tongue out, but it's like stuck to their face. It looks so stupid, <laughs> but like in a good way. <laughs> I think dogs often kind of look stupid, though, <laughs> in a good, in a good way. way. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I like some of the comments, though, the, the people who are like, but can you pet them? <laughs> Apparently, that's a big thing. Did you see in the Dauntless update that they had, like, and how many players have pet the dog? And they're like, too many to count. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think this is uh, going to be an interesting either hit or miss i feel like this isn't going to be a game that like this will be a game that either does really well or does really bad and people just kind of forget um and honestly there's a lot of people especially with the way this works since it probably will have a low scale of you know like you don't have to be uh immensely great at games to jump into this i'm pretty sure this will be a chill game to just mess around with and try to take pictures of dogs um, did they say this was going to be on the Switch or just PC? I think at this very moment it only has a Steam, a Steam page, page available. right? Yeah. So I think this would do a lot better on places like the Switch um, to get a certain demographic of younger kids because I feel like they would have a lot of fun with this. Um, but that being said, you know, Steam is a huge market and there's a lot of people out there who have access for this. I think it'll still do well. Um, and especially cause it's getting, you know, uh, actual publicity from bigger journalist art, like sites like IGN. And I know Kotaku did one for this as well. So people do have their eye on it. Yeah. People are very excited for paparazzi but something some people are much more excited for is in our next article it is uh it continues to be on ign because that good old egan just says all the good news um mm-hmm. it's written by colin stevens and is play Day, a bizarre handheld gaming system coming in 2020 uh panic inc known for publishing firewatch and the upcoming untitled goose game has announced play date a bizarre yellow handheld system with a crank control and weekly game releases Playdate uses a 2.7 inch uh, 400 by 240 black and white screen, features a D-pad, two face buttons, and includes an aforementioned hand crank control, which uh, featured 12 brand new games and is set to release sometime in 2020. Um, so the the games are actually kind of cool because they're doing them weekly and they're actually keeping them a secret and supposedly until they come out, and I'm, I'm assuming they might leak or just something might happen beforehand, but the names behind these games are pretty awesome. 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 These are some <laughs> awesome games. I'll say so. I mean, it's about to get so much worse, my grammar is, because it's like, I don't know how to say this name. It's like Kaita Takahashi from uh, Katamari Damacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach Gage, which is pretty easy from Spell Tower. Uh, Bennett Foddy, maybe, yeah. from uh, QWOP? Quop? Quop. Yeah. Maybe? Do you know Quop? Oh, okay. No, it's the, never heard oh of Quop Oh, my God. It, it's frustrating as hell you're basically uh s- simulating a person running track and q uh, oh shit i yeah have. You, yeah i know exactly what this stupid each game one is. of the key keys on your keyboard will move a certain part of his limb and it's like so incredibly difficult to get him to move anywhere <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have seen this game. Um, and one more notable name is Sean Inman. Uh, he or she, I don't know. I don't know if any of these are men or women. <laughs> <That's> um, okay. <laughs> is known for The Last Rocket. Uh, they're among, they've got games among these others, these other 12. I'm, I'm actually very excited for this. The only thing that sucks that everybody seems to think sucks is it's got a $150 price point, which I will agree. Mm-hmm. It definitely sucks, but supposedly these games will only be coming to this console. So depending on if these games are amazing, maybe it would justify the $150 price point. But let's be real. This is just for collectors. The the, the, the real reason that this exists is for collectors or somebody like me who's just like, but what does it do though? <laughs> I mean, it is pretty, um, it's... <sighs> Small, Pretty mysterious <laughs> in what kind of market they're pushing for here. Um, this is very enticing in a way where I'm even like, I kind of want it because it's just so it's it's so new. Like it's never something like this hasn't really been done before. Like the fact that they're they're coming out with this limited device, they're trying to push it on like a monthly 
or I don't know how exactly the the it's time a frame weekly. is. Okay, so it's a weekly. So supposedly time every frame. week. Yeah. yeah. So that twelve week. But then, like, what happens at the end of that? Like, how are they actually setting this up? Like, there, I heard some other people talking about this of how we're not sure at least i'm not sure i haven't seen anything to denote whether or not this is coming from the actual device itself like if they're just locked in there and they're then eventually unlocking them but the data is already stored on there is this getting some kind of wi-fi like connectivity that then will download those games like how is this working exactly because if it has a connectivity where it's wi-fi based and there's something that can connect this to the internet then maybe this means that more games can actually go on it. Maybe it justifies that $150 purchase. Otherwise, it's like, how much is really in those games? Like, yeah, it's it's an awesome, like, concept in that, that limited, like, oh, you never know what you're going to get. Like, it's almost like the biggest, most expensive version up front of a gotcha, like, game. <laughs> Just because... Yeah, I... I could I see where you're coming. Yeah, I could honestly see it go either way because since they're seemingly putting this out for like collectors and just enthusiasts in general, um and the seemingly there's going to be limited quantities, mm-hmm. I could see that after the initial like sale, once they sell out of all of them, they just wouldn't care and they wouldn't actually need to produce any more games. I guess. But I I don't know. It's a weird I, I it could go either it's way. It's a weird mindset though because in like today's day and age it's to try and keep people in an ecosystem not just drop it and then forget it oh yeah i definitely don't think it makes sense but uh it could exist i guess yeah it almost (laughs) i mean it doesn't make sense to make this fucking tiny ass console with a hand crank either i mean i think it's cool i like i don't know if it yeah if it wasn't 150 i would be so down for this this seems like something that could be like i mean it's just such a such a novelty item It also, when I heard about it, like if it wasn't the 150, like this is one of those things where I would want to like, if, if I was really big into collecting, I feel like this is a great opportunity to actually get this and like never open it because I'm sure that if this is a success, like you're basically gambling for it to be a success. If it is, and people really like it, then, you know, 20 years, 30 years, keep going on down the road. It just becomes another one of those weird classics. And I'm sure it would be another one of those like crazy amount dollar sales on an ebay or some auction thing yeah collectors go pretty crazy not just in like the initial sale but in like the resale market Mm. they it gets excessive like if you try to find uh like certain limited run games or like i am a bit put out a uh, collector's edition of hyper light drifter Uh they can go for a lot of money hell dude I was looking for fucking Digimon toys the other day, and they were going for a ridiculous amount. Like, it was it was excessive how much I would have to pay for these. I mean, yeah, wasn't there? I mean, there was an article just the other day about what was it the the first Super Mario or something that went on sale for like millions of dollars. Oh the yeah, like- uh, how like five or six people, some shit like that. They they banded together mm-hmm. and put all their money together to purchase this cartridge. Yeah, that was like uh, a month or two ago, I think. Something like that. It was um, it was relatively recent, not like not like yeah. yesterday, but relatively recent. But yeah, that one was which weird. is still. I mean, yeah, like the collectors are fucking insane. <laughs> like they they will go to uh, quite a long means to get that uh that one item that they yearn so much and this could be one of those items one day who knows yes yes who knows indeed uh who also knows what's going to happen with bloodstained uh our next uh, news article is over on polygon it's written by ons good and it is bloodstained premium dlc plans announced ang- <laughs> angering some fans <laughs> so I will admit, ONS Good is a little bit condescending later on this article. I'll make sure I point it out. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. But, (laughs) I mean, he was kind of just being a dick. But uh, uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night will offer... Offer, oh yeah, offer up, okay. Sometimes you just look at stuff and it looks so weird. Um, (laughs) We'll offer up six optional modes of Play Plus... um, Dude, I, I can't understand I why I'm getting you. so weird on these ones. I believe in you. I think you could do it, buddy. 
is going to offer up six optional modes of play. Plus, I feel like there needs to be a comma or something. That's probably why I'm like reading this so weird. Uh, plus, other playable characters for free after the game's launch in June. Uh, some of this content will even be available day one. Publisher 505 Games said on Thursday. The day one freebies will be the boss rush and speed run modes as well as a pure miriam outfit uh for the main playable character later on bloodstained will get two more playable characters the roguelike chaos classic and boss revenge modes plus multiplayer local and online for some cooperative and uh, competitive modes as for premium content there will be there will be that okay that's cool uh it will also be available on launch day the rub is that it will be 9.99 ega's uh, backpack offers two things the sword whip weapon and an in-game kogi koji igarashi himself to fight there will be there were originally promised as exclusives to backers on the crowdfunding game Basically, when it was crowdfunded. Mm -hmm. uh, a 5 of 5 Games representative acknowledged that the DLC made for a... Um, blah, 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 blah. Made for a sensitive topic. Yeah, they only asked like 30,000 of the backers and supposedly said they said they didn't care. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. how, many, I, how many backers were there in total for this, though? So, yeah, that's what I was wondering. They don't actually reference this in this article. The part where I was going to say he was being condescending, he says, nevertheless, some donors have chosen to complain about the premium DLC <laughs> offering in the uh, comments beneath the post. It's like, okay, if anybody has the right to complain that other people are getting stuff... It's definitely the people who backed this game and made it possible in the first place. <laughs> I, just, I hate to be that guy. Okay. But so I just looked it up and it was 64,800 backers. So I mean they only I mean they they surveyed about they half. They asked under half. Yeah, about half. What was it under half? <laughs> Not even 50%, Josh. What? What? Huh? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, my internet craps out. I was like, what? What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, what just happened? <laughs> anyway, let's go. Uh, yeah, so basically half of them were surveyed, um, which honestly, I, I don't know. I feel like why not, like especially if it's a survey, why not just all? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I love that, like, what they say about this. It says, uh, making this content available to everyone wasn't just about making money, said 505's Robert some other thing. I don't want to read his name. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, that's a part of it, but the chief thing is the uh, thing I was considering was making sure everyone had a safe and legitimate way to get the full game experience, no matter when they find out about Bloodstained, whether it's five months ago or five years from now, uh, that we are being respectful of the price backers originally paid, hence the DLC pricing. So I, I, I understand that they're making people pay like $9.99 for it. That's cool. Okay, I get it. And I, I think... That definitely makes sense, but I don't think I. I think it personally. I think it's a slap in the face to give it to them day one. Mm. I. I think paying for it, and I. I realize I've said I think like twenty five fucking times. But what in this do you article. really think? I think they should have just held off and given it way later. So there was a backer exclusive Quarrel comic for Hollow Knight. Um, and of course it eventually was like leaked online and it was digital and you could get it, but I believe you could also possibly get physical copies. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but if you did not originally back this, the developers themselves never, as far as I know, gave it out to anybody else. Mm -hmm. It would just kind of showed up online. So the only way that you could actually get it is by purchasing the hollow Knight physical collector's edition that just came out like through fan gamer not too long ago we actually reported on it that's how it was rebirthed i was i came back to life actually that episode had bad audio so you did not hear that but <laughs> it happened yeah <laughs> we we didn't get to witness the rebirth of mr von hyde <laughs> Yeah, I, I was birthed from a cocoon, like a, a dusty butterfly, I guess. That's a moth, by the I way, mean, like a dusty butterfly. That's, that's pretty Dude, hollow like, it's, it's a moth. 
No, it definitely is. There are moths in Hollow Knight. I don't know if there are any butterflies, but there are moths. I mean, there's one big moth, yeah, actually. And that could be you. I, just, I don't want to be that moth. That moth's a dickhead, it's, but it's okay. Too late. That's you. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think the the more appropriate way to do this would, would be to, of course, have them pay for it, but to also not offer it day one. I think that's a bad idea. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you because, honestly, from my side, like, I didn't really think of pushing it back, but I just thought that this makes sense. If I was a backer on this side, I probably wouldn't care as much just because I know I get pretty upset when, you know, there's not to say that I wouldn't, like, maybe I would have backed this, but I didn't know about that. And it seems weird that ignorance in that sense should be your downfall because you didn't hear about something at a certain time when it was you know crowdfunded i mean there was only a month that this was crowdfunded it basically did you hear about it in that month if not well too late for you too bad so sad which sucks because you might be an advocate fan of it you know you might be someone who's really into that style of games and you just it would miss your you know your radar so in that sense i think it's unfair in a lot of cases because yes those backers did put in that initial effort but for that they're getting those con you know those pieces for free so i still think that it makes sense with yours i think it is a little bit more reasonable to say like okay well you're you know the the main people who back this you get it first and those people will have to pay i think makes it a little bit less of a harder pill to swallow for those who would get upset but honestly i think they just need to get over it i think they're getting it for free and for that reason you know, this still is a legitimate um, business decision, in my mind, anyway. Um, So I don't actually believe they are getting it for free. Oh, technically. okay. Well, then... Well, I mean, I, they, they're paying for the game, obviously. So on their initial cra uh, Kickstarter, they had the $28 pledge, which got you a digital copy of the game. Then they had the 60 or more pledge, mm -hmm. uh, which was specker, Special Backers Edition physical copy. So you got a physical copy of the game for Xbox One, PS4, or Steam, um, which included PC, Macs, or Li Mac, or mm -hmm. Linux. And it includes exclusive backer-only content and a special Kickstarter exclusive exclusive slipcase so i'm assuming that's where that uh backer exclusive stuff came in either way the the further you go down here you have to continually pay more so i they didn't get it for free as far as i'm seeing they like the the people who just backed it are not the ones getting it it's people who paid more mm, for it okay that's a different story then yeah i would have to look into that then because if they're I mean, this is just what I'm seeing from the Kickstarter. I'm not 100% sure if it was, like, awarded to everybody, but if you had to pay more, that's fucked up. Yeah, because the only... Yeah, you're right, because the only one I do see that says in there that they'll have that that backer-only content is the $60. So, in this case, they're actually paying more. So, I think they should up it from $9.99 to, like... <laughs> what would it end up being? Like, another 20 or something to hit that $60 price point? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of weird. Like, I understand paying more for a physical copy, but you'd, you'd have to assume... So, like, it's less than $30 initially for just the digital copy. So, you'd pay an additional $10. So it means you're paying $20 more for a physical copy. I guess that makes mm -hmm. sense, but still, it's yeah, it seems a little scummy. Yeah, I guess that is more of a slap in the face than I'd originally thought about, and obviously that's because I didn't back it, so how would I know that? Um, but I, I don't know. I still think that it's, it's still reasonable because of the fact that they also paid that extra for the physical part of it, but it sucks that there wasn't a way to do that without getting the physical copy. And for that reason, they're kind of getting, like, pooped on. Yeah, I'm wondering if there was, like, an early bird. Do you know how... I hate how Kickstarter, like, puts them way at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, it would, it would like... be at the bottom, but I don't see anything yeah, there either. Yeah, I'm not either. seeing anything. Yeah, um, I'm not... It might have been available to everybody because in the, uh, the slacker backers section, it says, miss the boat, you can bat... Nope, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> um... <laughs> The, the special backer edition, it says all copies of the game from $60 plus tiers will include uh, special edition backer only content, which is a mighty, uh, no, okay, the mighty sword whip. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah so, so that's what you was. had to pay 60 bucks to get mm -hmm. this. 
which of course you get the physical copy of the game but still yeah yeah that like you you had to pay for it and you had to know about this early enough like it seems like the kickstarter backers had to do way more for this than like these other people who have to pay 9.99 yeah you know what i mean like i mean i don't know i don't think in this article it says how much the game is going to be when it comes out so maybe it'll come out to be like $35, $40, Thirty-five dollars, forty dollars, and then it'll make sense. It, uh, like it'll be like, okay. yeah, it it actually is the the price for it is actually already out. Give me one second, I'll actually find it. Is it you. okay? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. um, I believe it's if it's twenty-eight dollars, and this is fun. no, I believe it was. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's on Steam right now. It's got a special promotion for pre-ordering, which takes off ten percent, but the base value is actually forty bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. So I think it's slightly less fucked up then. Yeah. You had to pay $40 for the game. Like, the, the people who backed it got it for, like... Uh, well, the people who... I mean, if anybody's... I don't know. This I is mean, weird. It's in a, it's, it makes me feel Yeah, it's in a weird place because you have to pay 50 bucks essentially, for that exclusive backer, which is less, but you don't get the physical version of it. Is, like, the drawback. Yeah. So they... Essentially, what they did is those who backed at the 60 tier had to pay only ten dollars extra to get a physical copy of it but the, like the reason why i was saying is it, it just sucks because there was no way to just pay the you know for a digital version but also to be like hey can i just put nine dollars extra on there so that i can get the backer content like that wasn't available for them and it, it makes sense now because they know more of where they're at but like it just sucks because yes those who originally backed it are kind of getting you know a stiff end from it which isn't right in the sense that they're the ones who originally actually made this possible so to speak um but you know that's that's the risk that you take with kickstarters um you have to that's you have to go true. in you know knowingly that y- you could put on this money and get basically shifted at the end of it just because that's kind of what happens sometimes so it just depends you have to really believe in the product and the people and in this case it doesn't look like it's coming to fruition in a in a you know a good light but then again there are a lot of people who said that it didn't matter so they justified that as for why they didn't do a full review of everyone since you know this is clearly all they did was make a survey monkey survey and send it to people through an email so i don't know why it's that big of a deal that they didn't send it to all and why they only sent it to half especially with the number rate that you get as far as like the the drop-off ratio when you do surveys it's like you only will end up getting half the time like a fucking 20 percent drawback to all the people that you sent it to but it is what it is i guess yeah yeah speaking of what it is our next article and last article before we cram you guys with more articles but then we're not going to talk about them you know what i mean uh this is over on game informer it's written by imram khan and it is tim schaefer and jack black will talk about psychonauts 2 at e3 oh god josh i'm so excited i i I didn't actually bring this up my e3 predictions which i will say now well okay i did not okay you can't say it now no okay this is what i was gonna say was which i will say now is that many of my e3 predictions are coming true, but I got them wrong because they're all coming true before E3. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of like... In the two weeks. It's kind of like the nature of the beast, though. Like, I feel like with E3, there's so much news and, like, content that just kind of spawns around the month of E3. Like, everything seems to either leak or people just kind of try to jump the gun to get ahead of all of the news that's coming out. Like, it kind of makes sense for you to be like, oh, I'm going to release now... Because otherwise you have to compete with everything that's, you know, at that time. So I think it makes sense that people try to trickle in like these little tidbits of like, no, it's coming out now or it's coming out there or it's out now, you know, whatever it is. But it is kind of weird how because of a more digital age, everything is just so quick to to come to fruition. Um, I believe some of mine did too, but honestly, I don't even remember what I said. So... <laughs> <laughs> I do also love that everybody in their haste to get out of the way of E3, like you said, like they don't they don't want to be lumped in and overshadowed with everybody else at E3. They all end up releasing their stuff within like the first like the the weeks or two, like the first couple weeks before E3. Mm-hmm. So then they end up overshadowing each other anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's like, good job. 
That's just what happens. <laughs> But to this article, uh, the panel that they will be hosting, uh, it will be hosted by Tim Schafer, head of Double Fine and Jack Black, who I'm Dude, not even going to do that. Love, he, everybody knows who fucking Jack Black I fucking Jack love Black is. that he put that joke in there. I thought that was yeah, so funny. I was like, because it caught me off guard. I was so confused when I read it. I was like, what? What is happening? Until I realized it was a joke. So just to point out, it says, and Jack Black, who I believe is some sort of up-and-coming video game YouTuber that won a contest. (laughs) (laughs) It's so stupid. (laughs) Uh, It will be hosted by Jeff Keighley, uh, who himself is host and chief of the Game Awards, and uh, be a part of E3 Coliseum. Oh, yeah, that confused me. So, yeah, that that part's kind of weird. This... Imram Khan does address something that I've been thinking for a while, or at least for like maybe a month since Starbreeze has been having these issues. He says Psychonauts 2 is theoretically being published by Starbreeze, though the, uh, that future is much in doubt. When asked, Schaefer has previously said that he believes Psychonauts 2 could find another publisher easily, so there's probably not a lot of concern that the game will eventually come out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I'm so excited for this game. But when I saw that Starbreeze is going through all this trouble, and I believe either Kotaku or Polygon, somebody put out an article uh, not too long ago, within the past couple weeks, that they believe that Starbreeze is going to go out of business within the next Mm. year, that I was like, fuck, dude, just make sure you put out Psychonauts 2 first. (laughs) I mean, the good thing about uh, Psychonauts 2 is they were uh, a backing through Fig, so like... It's not just them doing it on their own as far as the Double Fine Studios just being like, hey, we want to do this, and then something goes wrong, and them being like, oh, well, I guess we can't. Let's just trash it for later. Is like, you're going to have a lot of angry investors slash uh, campaign backers with FIG. So I feel like there would be a lot of incentive for them to actually push and be like, nope, we got to get this done one way or another and jump ships if that, you know has to happen because of the issues with Starbreeze. So I'm not necessarily worried about Psychonauts 2. I just, it sucks because I know that means that this might be just more delayed uh, as it has been for so long now. Like, where has this been? Um, Yeah, to clarify, when I said I I was worried, I in no way thought that this wouldn't get published because it's definitely going to get published or somebody's gonna die. Um, But... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it probably me again um uh, it's not that i didn't think it would get published i just wanted to come out this year <laughs> yeah. all i want is for them to bring the milkman back he's so creepy i though. love the milkman his milk is delicious <laughs> I love that game so much. I really need to replay through it. I I hopped back in, like, I think a year ago and didn't get too far. I got to, like, uh, oh, shit. I got to my favorite part in the game. I just remembered. I got to my favorite part in the game when you hop into the the cuttlefishes. Oh, you're like Godzilla, Yeah, you hop into his. Yeah. (laughs) What do they call you? Like, Gogolica or something like that? (laughs) It's so awesome. I love that game so much, and I can't wait for Psychonauts 2. I almost even bought a VR so I could play Rhombus. I know. I well, I, I didn't buy a VR. Or think about it, but I was <laughs> I very almost upset. Didn't even think about it. Yeah, I was very upset that I couldn't play it because that I did not have VR. Um, but I'm I'm super hyped for Psychonauts 2. I've always been a big fan. It's to this day probably one of my top 10 games of all time psychonauts the original one it's i'm very rarely playing games a second or third time and this is one of the games that it just it's too good and i've ended up playing it like i think i've beaten it three times which is very like it doesn't sound like a lot but for me like if you actually know my game style and how i play games when it's just a story narrative driven game i will very rarely ever touch it again just because i never really care to replay things so for that i just think it's the platforming to it and the actual gameplay of it is just so good and i'm hoping that it keeps that same um that same feeling and that same spirit behind the kind of whimsical and very silly light-hearted but dark at the same time atmosphere um and like i said they just got to bring the milkman back if they bring the milkman back perfect 
10 out of You're 10. In. That's all you had to yeah. do? <laughs> that man that level was the best are you kidding me it was isn't that the one where you're like you're going around in those weird ass houses and there are those creepy like fbi yeah. agent-esque people like coming yeah, after you it's so wonky <laughs> i think that's also the one where you get your clairvoyance badge maybe. uh you're you're like clairvoyance patch i think that's the that is how you beat that boss fight at the end of it but I'm not 100% sure. I don't sure. remember. It's been, it's been quite some time since I've replayed it. Plus, the only thing that really I, I think is pretty terrible about Psychonauts is just their difficulty spike at the end. Um, I think I've actually talked about this once before on the podcast. But um, I hope they kind of make that a little bit more manageable. It's kind of the same thing you were talking about, how the regular levels in Gato Roboto are so normal, but then the bosses are just incredibly hard. For Psychonauts, I felt like the game was pr- relatively very just, you know, average as far as difficulty goes. And then that last boss fight where you have to go up the, like, the circus tower while the, like, rabbit thing is attacking you and you have to escort some kid. It was just so, so awful. It was way too way too demanding i'll have to play back through it just to see how annoying and egregious that boss battle was because i cannot remember it at all i know that you're like your uh, spoiler alert for like a 20 year old game. <laughs> i know that you're you're fighting your dad um i know that but i can't remember like anything else <laughs> yeah you're basically you're basically going through the circus and you had to protect i forget who it was but it was one of the brain dead kids who was like trying to play with this rabbit and the rabbit was like evil and you had to like protect him and you're getting attacked at the same time and you have to escort him up this area and like i had beaten it the first time and it was fine and then when i replayed it i tried it again and i remember like watching someone someone who like complained about it i think i watched like a youtube video or something and i was like i don't remember that but it it, like spawned me to be like i should play psychonauts again and i got all the way to that part and I tried it a couple of times and remembered, oh, this actually is kind of difficult. And just got like, I was like, I've already played this game. I don't need to beat the, <laughs> beat the boss again. So I just ended up throwing it away. I was like, well, I'll try you again later. All right, then. Josh, I think it's about time to get cramped. <gasps> cram, 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 cram. This is News Cram, the part of the podcast where we give you a rapid fire of all the other indie games news stories that are coming out this week. Uh, Yeah, and I'm going to tell you where they are to make it so much easier for you guys. So you guys should just pop over there, you look them up, you're like, man, I can't believe they told me where these were. It made it so much easier. And I'm like, thanks. I did that for you. Such a good guy. I'm... I'm a good Samaritan. If anything, I mean, I'm not a martyr. What else would you say? I'm a saint. Mm. That is what I am. I am this, the, 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 yeah, I forgot where I was going with I that. I like it. Um, so our first <laughs> news story is on IGN. It is PlayStation Plus Games for June uh, 2019 announced. Those are Sonic Mania and Borderlands The Handsome Collection. Sonic Mania, really good. Yeah. And the story behind his development is actually quite interesting. So I'd recommend it. I'd also recommend buying the physical copy instead of just playing this downloadable one because you get like a cool little like animated feature. It's very awesome. Um, the next article is on IGN. It is Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey, set for August release on PC, December for consoles. I kind of wanted to talk uh, about this on, one, uh, but we ended up... You want to talk about the Monkey yeah, Boys? Yeah, I kind of wanted to talk about it just for the comments below. Because, <laughs> because if really? you, yeah, if you look at the comments, anything that starts with like it trying to be like, oh, you're evolving, people get super rage when... <laughs> And like whether it's them trolling or not there's like a bunch of people who are like these are not my ancestors i was not like yeah i did not come didn't from evolve from monkeys. yeah i did not come from poop flingers and like all this like just people <laughs> fighting in the comments and i was like you see what you've done guys this is what your game has done <laughs> <laughs> Um, then over on Twinfinite, we have Dead Cells has sold over 2 million copies. Rise of the Giants out on Switch and PlayStation 4. That is the DLC that they just put out. Mm-hmm. Um, then also on Twinfinite, we got new Xbox Game Pass titles announced, including Metal Gear Survive and Super Hot. Uh, Path of Exile, also on Twinfinite, uh, Path of Exile Legion to unleash time displaced armies and combat reworks. I've never played Path of Exile, so, uh, but apparently it's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I'm actually kind of excited for this. I uh, I sent it to a couple of buddies of mine who we play it on and off, and I'm hoping those like melee changes that they talk about, the combat reworks, which is for melee warriors, I hope it does change because I had 
when we had last played started a melee class. So I want to see what that changes. And plus, usually when they do these kind of reworks, they give you a full reset of all of your um, your traits and like your passive abilities that you've set up. So I kind of want that because then I don't have to actually put in any points or pay for any of the the like the little objects that can make it so you are able to reskill your points. So it's just an easy way to, to get a free upgrade of everything. All right. Um, the next news article is over on Nintendo Life. It is strictly limited releasing Brazil-inspired beat-em-up 99 Vitas in physical form. Also on Nintendo Life, Slay the Spire brings single-player deck building to the Switch this June. Uh, also on Nintendo Life, uh, cyberpunk puzzler Hyperforma comes to Switch this year with brand new co-op mode. Very confusing. Last one on Nintendo Life here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the Guacamelee 1 2 Two Punch Collection has been delayed, which sucks. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, now back to IGN. Sea of Solitude release date set for July 2019. This is one of the things I said was going to happen at E3. It did not. Mm, it happened mm, early. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, also on the good old IGN is Dauntless surpasses 6 million players in the first week. Yeah, that's why it's so fucking hard to play that game. Oh, my God. Yeah, the queue times are ridiculous. <laughs> I love that game, but it takes like six million years. It literally, I got the other day that I was 180,000th in queue. I was like, I'll just go kill myself. How about that? I'll just go die instead. That sounds better. Yeah. I'm not going to wait all day. Sounds about right. <laughs> also on IGN, gorgeous Breath of the Wild style exploration game Sable coming in 2020. I believe it was actually delayed to 2020. It was supposed to be coming out in 2019. I'm... Mm. Um, then we also got on IGN Candice uh, of Hyrule Crypt of the Necrodancer Ooh. Zelda spinoffs release date may have leaked. Um, and the last story in news crime before we hop into that blessed segment um, is over on Game Informer and it is Journey launching on PC next week. So of course the great gods of indie games have blessed us with all these amazing news stories, but it's time for us to hop into God Bless the Crowd, the segment where Josh specifically, because I'm too lazy, hops into different crowdfunding sites and finds some sweet-ass indie games for us to talk about. This week, we only have one because the other one was just randomly just canceled. No idea. It was canceled like two days before we recorded. One day before. <laughs> I bl didn't it say it was canceled on the 27th? No, on the 28th. It was just yesterday. What the Yeah, I know. That's why I was so confused when I opened up the article. Well, I'm glad we don't record this like on Tuesdays because then it'd be really uncomfortable. I mean, <laughs> should have recorded it on Monday and then it would have still been there. <laughs> That's true. But then people would try to go and donate because we're, we're, we're the shakers and movers in this industry of crowdfunding games. Yeah. Really, Josh? Yeah, but then it would have been so funded so fast that they would have been like, well, oh, you got me why, there. why cancel it? We you got clearly me. made it. The only game we're going to talk about on God Bless the Crowd this week, specifically because I wanted to talk about it, I've been following this bad boy on Twitter for a little oh, really? while, is, yeah, yeah, is Mirador uh, discover a truly unique top-down co-op roguelike hack and slash where all bosses are created by players like you. Me? They had an exclamation point. Yeah, yeah, like you. Oh, uh, so they're cool. asking for $59,324 is their goal. They have $19,108. They got 21 days left. And uh, just a thick, just a massive 581 backers. I really like the concept of this game, and I'm going to tell you right now, and it's going to sound like it's a crazy thing, but everybody loves it. You can play as a fucking... Uh, crow boy, and I like that. Crow I'm a big fan of the crow boy. Yeah, I like anthropomorphic animals, and you could play as a crow boy, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> I like that. What a thing to be excited about! <laughs> I've been discouraged by much, uh, much smaller things. So yeah, at least this time I was excited about something for a small thing. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess that checks out. Yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. Um, yeah, this, this actually looked super cool though. I, so I definitely am a big fan of any game that tries to take this style, um, in the concept of making it where you give the tools to the player. It's not about them creating something. It's about them giving you the resources to then take that and run with it. And I think that's awesome because it's such a good way in a sense of 
kind of being a cop out of being like, well, why should I create everything? You should do it. But it's like, not at the same time because there's so many different minds and so many talented individuals out there that I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of unique and a lot of very interesting combinations that will come out of this as long as the you know boss creation uh, system is expansive enough to allow those users to kind of run freely. Um, but if it is, that means it's, you know, it's, it's going to be such an interesting concept. And I love the fact that it's also co-op, the fact that you get to build a crazy strong boss and then say, okay, me and my buddy, we're going to try and take it on together. You know, we're going to actually try and, and take that boss that I've, I've created something that seems almost impossible, but we're going to find a way to, to go at it, or we're going to attack other people's bosses that they've created. So it, it makes for such an interesting and a, um, a lot of the things that we've talked about before, it builds that ecosystem of having you constantly want to come back because you build a community in a sense of creation and, um, you know, diversification on what is available out there as far as gameplay. Um, and depending on how they do the communication with, you know, maybe the either inbuilt forums if it's like something like steam or if they do it in-house inside the actual game as far as how users communicate amongst each other and curate the uh way to find those bosses i think there's definitely a right way to do this and it could be something that is a great success so i was thinking i was like man there's something i frequently make fun of which is people like having uh, Kickstarter backers make their game. I was like, I doubt this game has anything like that considering that an entire segment of the game is people making their game. And yes, it does, Josh. Yes, it does. <laughs> For $1,000, a hefty price of 1000 Canadian dollars, which is actually only 742 US dollars. Ha, huh. get wrecked. Our money's better. Um, <laughs> you wow. can... Em. <laughs> you can write an in-game echo of memory, uh, which is, I guess, lore, or design a unique, uh, I guess you also, it's not or, it's and, design a unique sentinel decal with the team. Uh, plus, they can also make a d d in game statue or whatever. I don't think you make that. You just get that. Um, I love that that also exists in this game. Dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's so funny. I'm not I'm not surprised at all. Like I said, <laughs> kind of a cop out. Just let other people do your work for you. But it definitely is a cop out. You know what's also uh, a cop out? What's that? That I'm going to call Dibs right now. If we ever play this Dude, game together, I'm the Dibs dog. on the crow boy. You get the fucking dog. I'm the dog. That's what I was just going to say. I was like, I'm so hyped for this. I didn't even really look at the characters that you play at. That's why I was like, what are you talking about with this crow yeah. thing? Yeah. That's so fucking. Dude, this is going to be the game. This will be the game we fucking play. Yeah, yeah, we're going to make this excessively hard boss and we're going to fucking hate this game together because <laughs> this is going to be un like unnecessarily hard. <laughs> I can't wait. Dude, this this shit better get backed. That's all I'm saying. Uh, everyone who listens to this, I, it's time for that $1,000 tier. <laughs> I hope so. This game is so fucking cool. Yeah, this this does look pretty interesting. The movement of it right now, at least from the the visuals that they have looks a little clunky as far as like it just looks very choppy but this might be just because of the recording tool they're using um but once again this is you know nowhere near finished obviously they're still just trying to fund this in their sense so i'm sure that will be corrected in a sense um but the way it seems to to play from the few gifts that they have of like what's available looks kind of interesting it seems they have different cla classes of like the, the giant enemies that you can build um the one thing that i'm i'm interested to see if if there's actual customization for your character itself because i'm seeing a lot of different classes and different uh you know customization as far as the enemy goes but nothing for the little dog guy or the crow guy which obviously isn't really a, a deal breaker but it would be interesting to also have that in there if you're going to put that customization available for the bosses you're fighting. Yeah, I also really hope that's included. I also was trying to look to see if they had any stretch goals because in one of their uh, 
in one of their pieces of concept art. So the only two playable characters that they've announced are a crow and a dog. Mm -hmm. But in one of their like little pieces where it says discover the world of Mirador has a fox. And damn, that'll be cool too. I like foxes too. I'm not going to play as a stupid dog though, so you can have it. That's okay. I'll, I'll be doggo. Do you think they'll... You'll be that doge? Yeah, I'll be the doge. That's... Do you think they'll do something weird where they'll tie it to a specific play style for each character? Like like in the the little image down there, it looks like the crow boy is a arrows, the dog has a sword. Like an archer? Yeah, like an archer. Um, I don't believe, though. I believe you can actually like uh, swap out weapons because I think uh, if you watch like the, the gameplay trailer, the little trailer that they have, um, the crow and dog at times have swords. Okay. So I actually I haven't seen any of them where they have anything other than oh, swords. Interesting. So I'm not 100% sure. I hope they do. Um, but I'm totally... I'll, I'll buy this game. <laughs> this game is awesome. I love its art style. It reminds me a lot of Necropolis, which was, if there was anything great about Necropolis, it's that sweet ass art style. Let's be Ooh, real. You're gonna get um, that premium unisex T-shirt uh, for a thousand dollars. I mean, it's okay. Is it included in any other tier but that uh, one? Uh, I don't think I don't it think is. <laughs> but it's so cool. You get the doggo and the bird. If they also had the uh, Fox Boy, I might think about oh, it. Oh, yeah? Is that all That'd it takes? Pretty cool. You hear that? Spend $1,000 on a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, you also get other stuff. But. Yeah, you can build the stuff for them. <laughs> yeah, I'd get to make more of their game for them. That sounds perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, I might I might end up backing this. I mean, the to actually get the game is only 15 bucks US dollars. And you do get the closed beta access with it. So it's not just like a digital copy whenever. It's that they're actually included, including you in the beta. I did not see that. That's actually really mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Would you get that immediately or you get it once the back or like once the goal is hit? Uh, you would get it once the goal is hit. Cause it, mm-hmm. yeah. I may wait 21 days to do yeah. that. Well, because <laughs> in the, the actual title there of the or not title but the description of the items it says closed beta access soon after the campaign so i'm assuming that they don't actually have anything open right now so they're just once they say like oh yeah we're good to go we're green lighted for this we actually have the funding that's probably the first thing they're going to start working on is taking their existing pieces and pushing something that's manageable as far as like a demo or a you know a perspective to it so that you can be like oh here you go backers like here's a first sneak peek to it all right all right i i really can't wait for anything for this game it's so cool (laughs) we'll see hopefully they've got uh they got 21 more days Crossing my fingers that twenty first day I'll pledge a thousand dollars, I guess. <laughs> well, right now it needs forty thousand, so it might not be enough. <laughs> hey, I can't fucking carry the world on my back like Atlas, guys. Fucking start to uh, start putting some money on this. I wanna play as this crow boy. <laughs> Possibly even a fox boy. You never know. They might put that in there. Maybe. Who knows? It's very exciting. Very exciting. Uh it's about time we almost wrap this up because we got one more thing to talk about. Oh um, <coughs> I just choked. Oh, I, died. I guess we don't. Again. All right, show's over, folks. <laughs> so we like to round off these uh, these podcasts, these episodes, these weekly episodes that I actually post on Fridays, by the way. Just uh, each and every Friday. Um, we like to round them out with a nice little question about the games industry. So. Uh, An article came out on the 25th by Polygon uh, saying gaming disorder officially on the World Health Organization's list of diseases of all things diseases. So I wanted to talk to you about whether or not you believe gaming disorder is a thing. And I don't mean that it's like not a thing because people don't get addicted to games or anything like that. I specifically mean is a thing mostly because basically the the definition of a disease means that it has to negatively impact your life which i mean there are i imagine yeah there are the outlier cases of people who don't go to work all their relationships crumble and all sorts of stuff because of video games but also like every person i've heard talk about this has brought up relationships 
Um, and I mean, as long as you're not hurting yourself and you're still being a productive member of society, you don't have to have relationships. Like it's you, you don't necessarily like have a disease because you're antisocial and you don't want to have friends or relationships. So I, I found that part weird about this, at least like the conversation surrounding it. But I want to know your, your, your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, here's the thing. I think that anything in mass amount of quantities is going to be a bad thing. There's definitely a too much of something. Um, too much water. Too much dude. water. You'll drown. Um, you'll <laughs> drown as you're drinking. You'll be like, I'm so full. And then you'll just drown and you'll die. See? Too much water. You can actually be poisoned. Yeah, I know. By that's, water. that's actually what happens. You don't, <laughs> you, it's fucked up. <laughs> I mean, well, it's. You could also eat yourself to death. Like, the, too much of one thing. I don't know why we went to just food and, like, consumables in general. <laughs> but <laughs> Things that everybody does, yeah. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I think, I think anything can be, in itself, a disorder. Um, I don't think... I think a disease is a weird way to put it. And I think that the concept of it being a disease or for... I'm just going to call it a disorder because I don't... Disease just seems like a weird way to classify it for me. But I think that there could be a thing as a gaming disorder. The problem is, if I do say that this is a potential thing, and the only reason why I'm saying it is because there's ways to have disorders with just about anything, in a sense. And I don't think it's specifically tied to gaming. It's tied to a general obs like obsessive compulsion of doing a specific thing too much and just enjoying it too much. It's the same thing that happens with someone who's addicted to something. It's not really a disorder, it's an addiction. Um, and in that case, the reason why I think this is bad from a media perspective is because people overgeneralize the concept of disorders and addictions, and they will then take it in a way where they frame it in their mindset that anyone who plays games can now be susceptible to a gaming disorder. Um, which, I mean, for the most part, I'm at the same sense of you saying, if it's not affecting your you know, personal health or anyone else's and your relationships and allowing you to function in society as a normal um, individual, then there's no problem with it. You might do it more or less than another individual out there, but as long as you're able to function from a productive standpoint, whatever that means for, you know, you basically being able to be well-fed and uh, clothed and function properly <laughs> i don't i don't want to set a standard because that's not what i'm here to do but basically that you're able to function properly without that affecting you or impacting you in a negative way then i think it's not that disorder or addiction so to speak i don't think it's a real problem in the way people frame it so when a lot of people talk about gaming disorder they're talking about oh my kid plays games too much and i don't like it or oh he like you said chooses to play games rather than go out drinking with all of us because he's a, a nerd or he just doesn't like to deal with people so he's addicted to video games like that's not it like the problem is over generalization and that's a big problem because there are some people who will get addicted to certain things. So my long-winded answer is yes, I do think it could be a real problem, but I don't think it is in the sense that people are shining a light on it right now, if that makes sense. Yeah, I gotcha. The, uh, so it seems like supposedly the World Health Organization has listed the symptoms of gaming disorder as impaired control over gaming, increased priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming takes precedent over other life interests and daily activities, and a continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative uh, consequences. So... I and I totally understand why they they overgeneral or seemingly you you believe that they overgeneralize um like these these disorders and everything. I 
I initially thought it was kind of weird that they did specify gaming disorder because they also have like gambling disorder and other mm-hmm. things. Instead, um, I thought that they should just have like basically an escapism disorder and they're just like any activities that include escapism Mm. would be in this like gambling is escapism like watching too much tv escapism (laughs) playing video games escapism it's basically just a way to get away from your everyday life um gambling might be the on the fringes of that one i i don't really know a lot about uh, gambling disorders or yeah, gambling in general. Yeah, that's a little different because of the high that people get from the, the thrill of winning and whatnot. But I guess you could still put it in the same perspective. Yeah, you could say the same things happen in video games. But I think it's a... I would still say there's a little bit of difference in the amount of... Um, just because it has a more real-world... Uh, proposition as far as you being like oh i'm going to win this money and the thrill of you know the excitement of getting that substantial actual value from it but that being said a monetization value versus someone else's value of something else could be a different story so i'm putting my own values on that and that's why i think that so i could be wrong just because of that yeah i think i i find these like if anything's overgeneralized, I th- I find it the like symptoms of a gaming disorder. How it's like increased priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming takes precedent over other life uh, interests and daily activities. I don't see any problem with that. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you prioritize gaming over other things. It's not necessarily saying that you're like prioritizing gaming over your own health. Right. It's specifically just saying other daily activities. So in a way, I believe that that like classification is kind of looking down on gaming. But then, of course, if you put that in conjunction with uh, continuation or escalation of gaming, despite the occurrence of negative consequences, that definitely makes sense. Because then it's like, oh, okay, once you do it enough, like it doesn't matter if you do it so much. But once you do it enough that it starts to bear like negative fruit, then it's an issue. Mm -hmm then yeah i i understand it so taken out of context some of the stuff that they say could be bad i mean honestly it it just shot uh just hot take here i don't give a shit you could say that there's gaming disorder exists it's just like any other addiction um some people do believe addiction is a disease i actually don't know where i come down on that uh just because i don't have a whole lot of experience with addiction um in my family or otherwise but of course i'd have to do you know any sort of research i imagine it wouldn't be that hard to actually find people's opinions on it (laughs) and sway my own uh but yeah i don't really care like people could say that i had gaming disorder like i mean if people labeled me as having some sort of disorder i i don't care unless the only time i care about this is if any sort of law organization which from what i understand the world health organization is not Mm -hmm. um if if any like negative consequences came down on gaming because of this, that's when I would care. Otherwise, I don't really care. Like people have been looking down on gamers for a long time, or they did at least beforehand. So I don't understand why it changes anything now. Like, have you seen uh, like when Ninja went on like different talk shows and people would be like, "Oh yeah, you play games for a living," and they would like kind of talk down to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I also make more money than most of the people here." Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's always been a negative connotation with video games just for, I mean, forever, it seems like, in its expansion just because a lot of people didn't really understand it or it's always been seen as a kid's thing. I think that's a generational gap, though, that will change over time just because it's becoming more of a mainstream thing. It's becoming much more popular because as we're getting older, like, it's our generation is the one with games, so to speak, um, or at least had them back in the day. So I think a lot of those things might change. um, But once again, I could be biased and just putting my opinion on it and my twist because I am an adult who has had video games for his whole life. So I don't know. All righty. All righty. Well, I think it's about time to wrap up this podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening to Indie Incursion and Indie Games Podcast. Remember that we post new episodes each and every Friday. You can check us out on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, iTunes, all sorts of other places. 
thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you guys tune in uh, and subscribe on your favorite podcast service. We would really appreciate it. You can follow the podcast itself at IndiePod on Twitter. You can follow me at Hyde Legion. That's H-Y-D-E-L-E-G-I-O-N. And you can follow Josh at the underscore George 90. That's T-H-E underscore J-O-R-S-H 90. Super easy to find us. It's super nice. And make sure to check out all that sweet old written content over on the good old parallax media dot one thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you guys next week bye guys